Our next guest is one of the top heavyweights in the world. He's a former K1 champion, one of the hardest hitters in the history of MMA. He's currently one of the top heavyweights in the UFC. Mark Hunt, welcome back to Submission Radio. Hey guys, how are you? Thanks for having me on. It's always great when you come on the show. It's good to have you back. Now, fans are excited about this new book you've been writing. This kind of, you know, came out of nowhere. How close is it to coming out and how did uh, this whole thing come together? Well, it did. It did come out of nowhere. And I was, um, Hedgett approached me a while ago, but I think it was like five months ago, I think it was now. And, um, you know, uh, Vanessa asked me about doing the book. And I said, I think I asked it about four or five times to get to doing one. But I think the, the key that got me to do the book was. You know, she said, uh, if I could help someone uh, with the story, you know, even if it's one person, then it's, it's good enough to share the story. So I was, I looked along that line and thought, yeah, that's a great idea. So, you know, I'm always looking to try and help others, especially with faith or whatever it is. So, you know, um, they might be in a similar situation that I've been in many times. So, you know, um, I thought I'd do a book. So, you know, it's out in September. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's good news. You know, there's a the ghostwriter, Ben. We're just finishing up the book now. Um, yeah, it should be ready by September. Now, when we spoke to Chris Lieben about him writing his book, he said it was difficult having to relive some of the more difficult parts of his life when he was writing his book. Did you find that when you were putting your book together, Mark? Yeah, totally. You know, I, it took me back to places that I was uncomfortable with. And, um, and it goes to show how far I've come. You know, this is not me, myself, but how far I've been stranded as a person by God. I, you know, from a, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy when I sit back and think, think about the, the life that I've come through to become, a, you know, one of the top-end athletes in the world as a fighter. And, you know, I think, I, I, you know, God didn't make no mistake with what I did for a living, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You've got a really, really storied career, and not only that, but it's a, it's quite a long career, too, spanning, you know, in theory, different sports. You've got kickboxing, you've got MMA. Any crazy stories you can share with us from the book, just as a little tease of what we can expect when it comes out? Well, I've had a pretty checkered past, you know. I mean, uh, as a kid, you know, a troubled kid and all, but I can share one story with you. I, and I was, you know, well, my dad, uh, he was it was in a hospital. My mom was, had like seven strokes at the time. And yeah. she had about 11 now, I think. But she has, um, she was in a wheelchair and my dad was dying of cancer. He was all, he was like the, the cabri man, you know, he had a really white hair, <laughs> but he was all like uh, brown and uh, mm -hmm. like yellow his face. And so he was dying and, you know, we were in the, I walked my mother to see in the hospital and, you know, I was, I walked in, walked there in, in, into the, to see my dad and it was like a crazy ass smell in the room, it was like ashes. And then as I faced my mom, I, I faced my old man looking at him, you know, at the corner of my eye, I saw this really crazy, this huge, about 20 feet tall, I don't know what it was. I didn't look at it, it was, you know, my peripheral vision, so I saw this thing on the side of it and my mind goes, what the hell is that thing? And it was huge, like 20 feet tall and it was hooded. And it was holding something. I thought, you know, the the, the thing I got that feeling that I got from that thing, I was like, wow, that thing's crazy, man. And I think that here, that thing there is certainly here to click this, this guy right here in front of me. And, um, you know, I'll I never forget that. I, I think I've seen that thing about three or four times in my life. So when I said to myself, that thing's evil, it's bad, it's not good. And if I looked at it, I'll be dead, too, just like this guy's going to be dead. <laughs> wow. And that's just one of the stories. That, that's, that, it's not a story. It's just real. You know I mean? I, yeah, you know so are we so when you say this thing like are we talking like the grim reaper it, it, it actually i think it was the grim i think it was the devil wow. it was 20 feet tall and i thought my mind goes do not and i got tingles like i got tingles I'm telling you now i was like don't look at that thing that thing will kill you and i felt like the power emanating from that thing is just ridiculous if it opened its mouth the whole place is going to fall over it, it was just you know like i said i've seen that thing four times so i thought to myself if that thing's real then god must be real so it's something, uh, you know, I, I don't like seeing that thing, but, uh, you know, I'm lucky I haven't seen it lately, but <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah. And, you, and your mum saw it as well, did you say? No, my mum said she was in a wheelchair. She had seven strokes at the time. Okay, okay. So gotcha. she couldn't, you know, she had seven strokes, and I'm sitting there looking at my old man. He's, it was just a crazy crazy feeling at that time in the, in the hospital. It was like, anyway, mm. yeah, that, that's one of the stories in there. <laughs> so... Yeah, get the book. It's out in September. It's, gonna be, it's a great read. Yeah. Now, Mark, uh, let's switch topics for a second. Obviously, your last fight was here in Adelaide. Fans loved seeing you over there. Um, you got a bit of damage to the face after the fight. It was all over the news, obviously. Just wondering, and the fans want to know as well, how's the face feeling? Is Mark Hunt back to his pretty self? Well, I'm back to modeling, of course. You know, I'm always coming <laughs> by me at the dance. You know, I'm back to face modeling. <laughs> it's, uh, 
it wasn't a good night in the office. You know, I made a couple of mistakes that night and, you know, I wasted a whole camp. I wasted my whole camp and you know, I can't apologize enough to my team and all the guys that are up here. You know, because I, I shouldn't even have to cut weight for these things. And the problem is I had a, I had a bad weight cut and I didn't carve up tonight, you know. And if all those fighters listening, don't ever drink a lot of drinks after weighing in, you know, because... I never, I never had any past or anything like before, so I was running on, you know, minus E. But I didn't really realize that until I actually had the first, uh, the first uh, 30 seconds of fighting with Steve and then I realized, wow, you've got nothing. And then the rest of the fight ended up me being getting a hiding, so <laughs> that's what happened. We were okay. Yeah, you gotta remember, that's my fourth weight cut ever. Yeah. I normally sit around one, close to 140 on my off time, so, you know, right now I'm trying to, bring my fat ass back to uh, 110 on the 15 so I can actually compete with these guys. That wasn't a that wasn't a good night in my office and that wasn't even a fight. That was just me getting a hiding. And, you know, I don't want to do that ever again. Otherwise, you know, why am I even competing? I might as well just be hanging up. <laughs> like I, be- I do apologize. I can't apologize enough to my team. You know, for wasted all that time, there was like 12 weeks of wasting time. And I, what, I, what I mean by that, I, because I, I went to, to the fight you know, the way I, I did feel like I was I was doing okay in the rounds. I was doing eight, five minute rounds of sparring for three guys, but you know, I just, the, the last bit of the fine tuning didn't didn't work out because they didn't have any carbs and before. So trouble the waters for the fight. So you know, four rounds, five rounds of getting a beat down is not really good. <laughs> so just to clarify, so you you didn't have any carbohydrates before the fight, correct? Like the day the day after the well, the I way. Well, I did. I, I, I had you know after cutting the weight, I had uh, I was drinking a lot of drinks, and my body was. My mom was saying, oh, well, you're not, you're not hungry, so you must be content. Mm. And, you know, my trainer did say, Mark, have some parts if we get a bed, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, not feeling hungry, and I was I was fine. And, you know, I made a freaking silly mistake, and that's what happened. So, you know, but, but you know, my features, are, I'm all good. My skeletal frame is fine. You know, a lot of people said, well, I think it's time to hang it up. Well, I don't think it's the same thing because, you know, I, I love what I do, and that was just a bad error I made, and... You can't really make these errors, especially if you fight in the top pin, because they'll fix you up, just like I got fixed up. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, for sure, Mark. And obviously, you're speaking about how disappointed you were with the whole thing, the camp being wasted and stuff like that. Was the fact that a lot of people thought that if you won the fight, you were going to get a title shot here in Melbourne at UFC 193, and that was gone. Was that one of the biggest disappointments of the night for you as well, knowing that you won't be headlining that card? Well, no, the fact that I've never lost back at home, you know, I never lost a uh, point, you know, I wanted to keep that record standing, but, um, you know, I've never lost a rematch, you know, that, that, that's another thing I want to keep standing, but it wasn't the fact that I didn't get a title set, that I wasted everyone's time with that, you know, by making those, a couple of little errors, you know, and the guys are too good at the top end to try and make those errors, and, you know, I, you know, I thought I could hang in in the fight, even though I was getting beaten down, I thought, you look, look, man, I just, you know, get him a good couple of shots, but, and I just got worse and worse, and then, you know, the hole got bigger and bigger, and I was like, man, I, anyway, that's what, you know, it was just not good uh, for everyone to watch, especially not actually being a real fight, you know, it was, it was like one, one side is beating all the way through, so. Mm. Well, we was... People were feeling pity for me, I mean, I didn't feel pity for me, I feel really blessed as a fighter to be competing at the top end, I mean, they were saying they feel sorry for me, well, they feel sorry for me, because I love what I'm doing, I mean, <laughs> I might not have uh, loved it that, that night, but, uh, you know, like I said, I'm not a 95 person. And, uh, yeah, so <laughs> I always feel blessed to, to still be competing the top, with the top guys at my age, so. If you're not a 95 person and you're not obviously going back to modeling, then uh, it sounds like you're staying in the cage, which is good. Having well, said well, that... Modeling. Modeling's, <laughs> modeling's not nine to five, mate. You know, modeling you can go, you can go anytime you want, right? <laughs> well, that's true. We'll see Mark on, on GQ magazine next next month. With a lot of names tied up in the heavyweight division, Mark, at the moment, you know, there's a few guys that stand out as potential opponents. You know, guys like Travis Brown, the winner of Frank Mir versus uh, Todd Duffy. But the other man who has yet to find an opponent for himself is Alistair Overham. Now, you're a fan of avenging losses, and uh, you know, if you never lost a rematch, would you be interested in a rematch yeah. of the Ream? And uh, how would you see the fight playing out between you guys? Well, look, man, I like, I'll, I'll rematch anyone. You know, I, I still, like I said, I feel I'm the best fighter in the world. I mean, everyone goes through a couple of losses, but, you know, I like, I'll rematch anyone, and I'll fight with anybody anytime. It just depends on, you know, what's happening with, uh, with uh, how you see me in the, in the roster, you know? So, we'll see how it goes and who it is, you know, for the next fight. So, you know, like I said, I will dance with anybody. Mm. I like doing the tango, and 
the waltz, the waltz especially. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wonderful. And obviously, is it still a goal of yours to get onto the Melbourne card, Mark? Of course, I love the the fight on the Melbourne card. You know, like I said, I don't really, um, I didn't really mind. I didn't deserve to, the headliner because I got beaten down with stuff. But you know, I, I, I do. I feel I'll be. I should be on the card somewhere, and I'll be looking to come back. You know. Stronger than ever. Hopefully, so, you know, I'll be getting ready to battle. I mean, hopefully they put me on that card or, you know, somewhere else. Now, right. every every time you come on, Mark, we like to discuss your clothing line, Juggernaut. It's one of the favorite clothing lines in MMA. Tell us, what's the process behind the designs? Are a lot of them chosen by you and how does it work? And also, also, let me oh, also yeah. add, it's pretty yeah. damn cold in here in winter. What are a couple of pieces of uh, clothing you could recommend for us, Mark? Well, we just got a whole new line of clothing, of jackets and everything. You know, the, 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 the clothing brand, Juggernaut, you know, Juggernaut was my first fight name ever uh, back in uh, when I had my first fight, 89 or something. And I had tried the the, the branding like every other fight I thought I'd do my own. Like, I tried it four or five times, you know. Uh, four times, I got ripped off. You know, but I'm not a quitter. So, you know, the the, 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 the name speaks for itself. It's unstoppable. So, you know, the first time I've done it, it's worked. I've got a great partner who designs everything, Justin, and... You know, we're just trying to move into everything, like uh, all sorts of different clothing, you know, uh, martial arts gear. So, um, yeah, you know, you can purchase the gear online, uh, www.jugmt.com. And, you know, we just got a whole new range of jackets. I was just having a look at the designs and the quality that, and uh, should be up should be up on the web, website pretty soon. So it's, I'm excited about that. Well, there you guys go. Mark Hunt, he's a super busy guy. There's a book coming out. There's a clothing line. And we're excited to see who he fights at UFC Melbourne. Guys, you can check out Mark's clothing line, like he mentioned, at www.gugnt.com. And follow Mark on Twitter, at Mark Hunt, 1974. A lot of interesting tweets formulated by the general himself. Mark, thank you very much for coming on to Submission Radio. Hey, thanks very much for having me, Submission Radio. And I'll uh, talk to you soon. 